When I read the scriptures, I thought, this will be a breeze. I've been given the opportunity to serve communion on several occasions. I love the Psalms verse because I am in awe of God. I'm in awe of Jesus Christ. And I know that the Holy Spirit can work through each one of us. I am grateful for the opportunity to share with you once again what I wasn't expecting as to how to take the reverence of this time and place and put it down on paper. I always start with a small prayer asking God to work through me and allow me to only be a vessel to take my humanness and set it aside and to allow the Holy Spirit to work through me. Sometimes there are thoughts and ideas that go through my head and like the young lions in the psalm readings, I also suffer from want and hunger. I want the words to flow. I am hungry to know more and to feel more and to see more. My senses are engaged and I sit and type. Then I hit the backspace because you see it's me, not the Holy Spirit working through me. Then I look at the next verse and the words that jump off the paper are, those who see the Lord lack nothing. I find that God has given me everything. God has given me the ability to breathe, to see, and to feel. You know, we are God's greatest miracle. We are all made in God's image. God has given us a heart that beats and blood that flows through each one of us. God has given us the ability to see, to feel, to hear, and to smell whether that's through our eyes or ears or the nerve endings of our hands and fingers. Through all of this, I am in awe of God. Jesus was, to me, the greatest and wisest teacher. Christ taught by telling stories, stories that we can hear and see and apply to even today. I love the stories that are written in the Bible, from the story of Ruth and Naomi two women in love. You can't tell me that they were not in love. I can just picture Ruth and Naomi standing on the side of the road, the road and Ruth telling Naomi, do not press me to leave you or turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. If that's not love, then I don't know what love is. In the love of two men for each other, Jonathan and David is the epitome of that love. You can see it, you can feel it. When Jonathan made David swear again for, uh, by his love for him. When one says, for he loved him as he loved his own life then that to me is true love. The strength that we find in Moses as he leads the people out of Egypt or the strength in Queen Esther as she stands before her king for what is good and right. As she stands for her people, the Jewish people who were to be slaughtered. When the king asked Queen Esther why? She approaches him and says, If I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, see, the king didn't know that she was Jewish. But she said, If it pleases the king, let my life be given me. Meaning, please don't kill me just because I'm Jewish. That is my petition. And the lives of my people She's meaning the Jewish people. That is my request. She walked through her fear of rejection and possible execution when she approached and asked to speak with the king and make her plea. From the suffering of Job to the strength of an eagle, those are just a few of the stories that you'll find in the Old Testament. The New Testament brings new stories from the birth of Christ the teachings in the synagogue, how Jesus reacts to greed and dishonesty when he flipped over the tables, to Christ's healing presence for the woman who touched the hem of his garment, 
to the man who could not walk or the one who could not see. This to me is grace and faith in action. Then of course there's the Sermon on the Mount to the meeting of the five feeding of the five thousand. The second Tuesday of every month, you know, you, you bring food in and you think, oh my gosh, will we have enough? And then we come up here and we have a wonderful sermon by Pastor Charlie and then we go downstairs and it's like we have more than enough. We have tables that are overflowing. To me, that's the feeding of the 5,000 today. Jesus taught us a new commandment in the New Testament, which is the greatest, and that is to love. Love God above all else, to love your neighbor, and to love yourself. Christ teaches us what love is, who to love, and whom to believe in. Jesus teaches us how to live, what is right and good, and when we get off track, we are given the Holy Spirit to guide us back to the one who truly loves us. The Psalms reading says, Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the awesomeness of Abba God, which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. As in the Psalms, we are not perfect. Don't propose to be. But we do not, but if we do not speak of evil, and if we do not lie or ask for something we cannot have, then we're headed in the right direction. Sometimes for me, I ask for things and I get them, and it wasn't exactly what I wanted. But I ask, and I got what I asked for. So do be aware, when you pray for something, it may not be entirely exactly what you asked for. But if we do good and seek peace, then we are. I am filled with a cup of blessings, a cup that's overflowing. And I know that's for you also. I've been given the opportunity to serve communion on several occasions. And the Gospel of John is an account of the Lord's Supper. I've never told anyone what goes through my head or my mind's eye when I stand with Pastor Charlie, with Mary, or DJ. But I'd like to share it with you. I promise I am not crazy nor do I have audio or visual hallucinations, I promise. Although it may sound like it sometimes. So I wanted to let you know that up front. I want to preface this with that statement. But when I'm up here and I close my eyes, and I look to the back corner of the sanctuary, I allow my mind to drift to the time of Jesus Christ. I can see the town that we are traveling to in the horizon. I hear the noise of the crowd. I can see the merchants standing around asking, do we want to buy food, vegetables, silks, clothing? I can smell wood burning, dinner cooking, bread baking. I can smell the dirt and the dust that, from the road that we travel on as we approach a house. We are tired and dirty and hungry. The crowd surrounds us and they press upon us. We enter a house. It is cool, the sun is setting. There is a breeze that flows through the windows. There are candles burning and I can see Jesus sitting at the head of the table, once again, telling stories. Jesus knows that by telling stories, we can identify with the message and we will absor absorb what is being said. But I wonder what the disciples thought when Jesus said, in the Gospel of John chapter 6 verse 51, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give you for the life of the world is my flesh. I wonder if the disciples knew that this was the beginning of the end. I wonder. I wonder if they knew that Jesus was speaking about himself. I wonder if 
It even crossed their minds that they would be called to carry the message. I wonder. We know the rest of the story. But did they have any idea, any clue, maybe even the slightest thought of the outcome? Or did they brush it aside? Because Jesus was too young, too valuable, too good, too caring, too loving. Did they know? Today I wonder what goes through the mind of a child when they see us lift the bread and we say, Jesus, as he sat at a meal with his closest friend, said a blessing and said, This is my body, which will be given for you. Then we lift the cup and say, This is the cup of my blood, which shall be shed for you. And as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, remember me. I wonder. I know that the Eucharist or Holy Communion is an analogy, but if I was eight, I don't know if I would know that this is an analogy. I probably would not even know what an analogy was. I would know that loving God and loving Jesus was a good thing because it makes me feel good. At 57, my question is still why? Why does Jesus use the analogy of bread to identify himself? And what I came up with is that bread is food for the body and Jesus is food for the soul. Jesus taught parables and stories and to tell a story you have to create an image in one's mind. You have to use images that one can identify with. The story has to be intriguing and one that catches one's attention, such as in the first verse. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. We need bread or food to maintain or to live. We can only live approximately 21 days without bread or, and water. I wonder how long that we can live without love. A hug, a touch, a kiss. To be truthful, I don't know about you, but I don't want to find out. And those that know, my heart goes out to you. Scripture reads, whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jesus is predicting his death. He is telling everyone that he is going to give his life for the whole world. And it's not just his heart. It's his life. I can see the temple people arguing among themselves, wondering how and why he would do such a thing. I wonder if they got the message. I wonder if they heard what he was saying when he said, those who eat of my flesh and drink of my blood will have eternal life. Jesus doesn't say may have eternal life, but will have eternal life. Let me reiterate, whosoever believes will have eternal life. Me and you and everyone out there, we are the whosoevers. We are loved by God. If you are 8 or 88, Jesus is love. The bread and drink that are blessed and consecrated are for us to remember that Jesus loves us. No matter what happens in our lives or the choices that we make, if we turn from Christ, we can always turn back. God and Christ will not leave us. Christ is the true food. As it is written, this is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats of this bread will live forever. Christ came from heaven. Jesus is the child of God. Christ feeds our souls. Christ teaches us to love how to love. Christ will never leave us. As long as we believe in Christ, we will have eternal life. When communion is served today or any day, 
know that as you partake in the bread or juice, that you're inviting Christ into your lives to walk with you, to guide you, and most of all, to love you so that you can love yourself and others now and forever. I wonder, whoever eats of this bread and drinks of this wine will live forever. Amen. <laughs>